Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Flying Circus, Flights of Fancy Special, where I talk about the planes in the book. You already know what this is about there's four planes to go let's go, starting with the Albrecht feel, the mailman plane. Once a big name in early aircraft design, especially in the creation of racing planes, Garrett Albrecht disappeared from the historical record not long after the declaration of war between the UWF and the Gotha Empire, it was generally assumed he was simply killed in the fighting at some point, and little thought was paid to it. In reality, Albrecht, a lifelong pacifist, had fled his home in Shucker to a rural town on the Western Sea, terrified of being press-ganged into making weapons, he and his immediate family lived in anonymity through the fall of the UWF and the end of the world under assumed identities. Old man Albrecht returned to aircraft when his grandchildren began to express interest in being male flyers to reconnect the town to the outside world, not trusting the handful of questionable surplus planes in the village, Albrecht tore them apart for parts, combining racing plane aerodynamics with modern engineering to create a speedy stable plane to keep his family safe. Within a year, he was getting orders for more. The current stat you see here is for the armed version of Albrecht feel, with guns weighting it down, yet despite that, it's still very fast, the perfect plane for a mailman on vengeance, it's fast, it's tough, guns in front and back, no wings to block your line of sight, very stable, and has a lot of power, but its high wing makes it a bit hard to turn, the high radiator can spray hot juice in your face if it gets shot, and its firepower isn't really much to be honest. Also, it's kinda expensive for what you are paying for, but hey, it won't try to kill you. As for its variant, there's just one, the original with all weapons removed, rear seat replaced with small cargo space to carry and deliver stuff, and a prop replaced with a high speed one, this thing is fast as hell, perfect for express delivery to just about any location, and if the customer refused to pay, bring a big fucking iron. To put it shortly, if you want speed and enough guns to just tell people to back off, the Albrecht feel might just work for you. Next, there's Tiger Sperber 8NA, a really dirt cheap scout made at a wrong time. Due to the collapse of the UWF southern flank, Fokker captured the Tiger company headquarters and a great number of Ritter facilities, among the loot were Schreiber B.9 rotary engines, blueprints, and jigs for frame pieces, Tiger's first contract for its new owners was to use these captured resources to drive the swarms of Ritter Model C from the sky. Unfortunately, by the time the Sparrowhawk was completed, the Model F had become the workhorse of Fokker's enemies, the 8NA, designed for short sharp attack dives, was in most ways better, but couldn't justify the strain on captured engines and the expenditure of now embargoed castor oil. In 1604, a militia flyer discovered a warehouse at the edge of Mid-Urban which had been spared the gas by its location at the top of a hill, inside were hundreds of 8NA airframes and wings, so many they were stacked atop one another. Once reassembled and tested, pilots quickly realized that it was an astonishing dogfighter using a very common power plant, many wondered why it had been passed up, surely if they deployed it widely, Fokker could have easily won the war. Yup, castor oil embargo struck again, you probably got sick of hearing that after I have mentioned this so many goddamn time, but trust me, so did the German. As expected of its low price tag, the Tiger Sperber is just another single gun scout with a stat line you expected for one, OK speed, high handling, OK survivability, and of course, one gun, but not just any gun, this scout has a mechanical machine gun, which fires faster the higher the engine RPM is, increasing the sheer density of the attack, but at the same time, if something goes wrong with the guns, the engine goes wrong too. The idea for this plane is for the pilot to perform a short dive, which increases the engine RPM, fire the gun at the closest target, and repeat until either the engine or the enemy falls apart, that doesn't sound safe, but considering this plane is designed for an entire squadron to do the same thing and generals of the Great War tend to not give a fuck about pilot survivability, the exchange rate tends to favor the Sperber. Of course, we all know how the history of this plane went, but hey, if you want to maximize your damage in a single run, start revving your engine, and thankfully, the engine has zero reliability, so it's actually kinda safe to do so. Other variants of this plane included, a simplified version with 9 area and 8 span wings for both wings of this biplane, plus positive stagger, wire, and struck to steel parallel, this thing is even cheaper than the original, but slower, and more fragile, next there's the upgun variant which just doubles the gun, for absolutely no drawback at all, so if you get a second mechanical gun from somewhere, you should just put it in. All in all, the Tiger Sperber 8NA provides more variety for those without a deep pocket but still want a decent armed plane, 
just keep an eye on your RPM and the weird sound your engine will make. Moving on, there's the Mark Grifton's Boat C, a hefty seaplane bomber. Sopwith and Mackey were originally rivals for the Northern Sea, not the staunch allies they are remembered as today, Sopwith's ragged cliffs mostly precluded the construction of conventional shipyards to try and match the Mackey Sea Hair, so instead Sopwith invested in a series of long-range bombers which could attack ships, the Mark Grifton's boat was the last and best of these designs. The original plan was that the aircraft was to be launched from a mobile aerodrome Leviathan on the high seas, but the project was abandoned for costs as Sopwith entered the war and the planes converted to seaplanes and land-based bombers. During the war in Mackey, the Todd's boat soon became the most hated tool of the Sopwith Flieger Corps, they raided landing barges, sinking the hopes of an amphibious invasion, flew harassment campaigns in the Caprini Islands, and even launched from Mackey vessels converted to carry flight decks. They were so loaded that the Fokker Kingdoms demanded the entire fleet be turned over in the peace treaty, and now they are a staple of fisher communities, especially those on the eastern coast who venture farther out to sea. Compared to the Tiger Mount 13 SJ, also a seaplane that has bombs, the Mark Griff Todd's boat is less tougher but way faster with more engine power, allowing it to swiftly deliver its explosive payload to the target and get away safely, which with its excellent stability and reliability, can practically be done while the pilot is taking a nap. Unfortunately, there's a big problem with this plane, it can't turn well at all, and the handling is actually worse than what is shown here, I will show you why later, but it does have decent amount of defensive firepower, and with its speed, it can cover the vast distance it will travel quickly and smoothly, well worth it for its price. As for its variant, there's the carrier-based one with landing gear, which reduces its drag enough to increase its speed and lower its energy loss, and if you are wondering about the handling, it was due to the nerfing of SLAT a while ago that didn't get corrected in the latest version of the plane pack yet, so if this has been corrected, it probably doesn't match what was showed in here now. Anyway, the Mark Griff Todd's Boat C is a well-designed long-distance bomber, both fast and tough, anything you want to destroy half the continent away will now be in reach, and you will get away safely. For the last plane of the flights of fancy plane pack, there's the Von Morgan Fährt. Soon after the fall of Mackey, the newly crowned Fokker Emperor was informed that Gotha had spent the previous two years building a series of R planes, massive bombers with 50 meter wingspans, Fokker's bomber fleet was limited mostly to slower airships, so the call was put out for the new Fokker Empire to build a plane of a similar scale, named for the legendary beasts that carried Sigvert to the afterlife. The rushed prototype was paraded in Kolingen a mere two weeks before the war began, and the commonly believed story is that the machine crashed over Kaiser Landung on its first mission, overloaded with bombs, Fokker's gas attacks were carried out primarily by Zeppelin, Tiger Nash Orns, and SZ-3 Narwhal seaplane bombers. According to those who witnessed the machine before the end, the Pferd was drawn by four large eight-cylinder over-compressed engines and could carry a staggering 2,000 kilograms of bombs, it was so heavy on the controls that two co-pilots were needed to wrestle it into submission, and it carried a radio to guide it during night attacks. It was by all reports a unique and terrible technological marvel, and the world is far better off for its lone example's destruction. Rumors have long circled that more Pferds were built, but these have been mostly dismissed as nightmares from a traumatic age, unfortunately, Evidence has begun to surface which backs up this claim, and indicates there may be as many as half a dozen, somewhere in the Fokker Mountains. Pferd, means horse in German, and in Himmelgard, horse doesn't exist, making land travel even more difficult and causing civilizations to develop flight before will instead, in Himmelfolk's myth, a horse is a legendary beast that carried Sigvard, founder and first mythical king of the Gotha Empire, to the afterlife, and now, this thing has its name, and it will perform its role on an industrial scale. The Von Morgan Pferd is a super heavy bomber in the most literal sense, it's slow as hell, packs enough guns and ammo for a flight of armed scouts, big enough to weather bullets from its sheer size, and could carry two tons of bomb in a single trip, that's a truly ridiculous amount of ordnance. Nothing will survive its onslaught, hell, nothing will survive even half of its payload, this thing, is definitely not for players to get, this thing is for your player to shoot down, because otherwise something terrible will happen when this thing releases its payload, and you gonna need a lot of bullets to bring it down. This thing has no variant, not like it needs it, and it is, to simply put, an engineering beauty that should be set on fire and burnt, so nobody will make something as terrible as it again. And that's all for the last few planes of the flights of fancy plane pack, from the speedy Albrecht feel to deliver mails or bullets wherever it's needed, the bullet hose Tiger Sperber 8NA for when you need a lot of bullets on your foes fast and cheap, the long-ranged Mark Griff Todd's boat sea that can bomb just about anything over the sea, 
and the Von Morgan fared. What comes next afterward, well, there's the flights of the museum plane pack, where things will get very obsolete so to speak, because almost every single plane you have seen so far are actually somewhat modern designs for the era, people really, really, have to learn how to build planes before they could make good ones, and the ones you will see are those that actually works, because, obviously, how else do you play flying circus with them, anyway, that's all for now and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.